This is Live Well Talk on Laughter and Mental Health. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at United Point Health, St. Luke's Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about laughter and the role it plays on our physical and mental health. Joining me today is Liz Breen, licensed social worker and outpatient therapist for United Point Health, Abbey Health Services. Welcome. Hello. The old saying, laughter is the best medicine. Uh, certainly, it's uh, intuitive to understand. Uh, I mean, even the Bible talks about how uh, uh, those that can laugh at the days to come with strength and dignity of the Lord, et cetera. Uh, what, what, what impact does laughter have on, on our mental as well as physical health? And is laughter equal to happiness? I don't know if it's necessarily equal to happiness, but our laughter does create some more oxygen rich air. So that stimulates our heart and lungs. Um, and uh, in mental health, we talk a lot about the your fight or flight response um, is connected to um, our heart and our lungs, like our breathing and our heart rates. Um, so that kind of sends that message of relaxation and less fight or flight responses. Interesting. It, has there been, it, I mean, from your aspect as a mental health professional, uh, is is, is there evidence or studies that support the observation that laughter is the best medicine? So I didn't necessarily know that before I got asked to do this podcast, but I did a little research. Um, and yeah, there were a lot of articles um, about how it impacts mental health um, scientifically. Um, so I talked a lot about dopamine and serotonin levels increasing um, and stress levels, stress hormones decreasing. So really, it's kind of like it improves our moods. Um, I just did a training last week that talked about how our brains don't really know if we're faking, like smiling or laughter, because our body is sending that relaxed message to our brain, which then creates an improved mood and less tension. So I mean, it, it, it's certainly believable, you know, yeah. I mean. You, you laughter, you, you laugh. Now there's some sort of despicable me, evil laugh. We're not talking about <laughs> sure. that. Sure. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, as a mental health professional, I'm sure you have some coping mechanisms for individuals that have mental health problems. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, how do you coach someone to have more laughter? I don't even know if that's a, that's, that's a tough question to answer, but I expect so, a, I expect a wonderful answer. So I'll do my best. All right. <laughs> so I actually, there's some psychology out there that says that, um, like even voluntary laughter, just like doing it on purpose, kind of a fake it till you make it, um, is helpful. And in my research, I saw that something is becoming pretty popular called laughter yoga. I think maybe I could get behind, but I had never heard of before. Um, so it is literally a group of people that voluntarily laugh together. In my practice, um, I use a lot of laughter. I do groups and individual counseling. So um, I use a lot of laughter to like increase connectedness, bonding. So I think by modeling it, it's helpful for people. Okay. Well, you know, it's one of those things that it, it, it's kind of like there's no study of wearing a parachute when you jump out of an airplane, right? Right. You know, so that the, the benefit of uh, laughter, uh, certainly. I mean, how often, you know, you hear people say this all the time. It seems like I say it a couple times a day. You know, all I can do is laugh. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it, you kind of uh, reduce that stress in your life by just saying, all I can do is laugh. Because what you're really mm -hmm. saying in the whole scheme of the universe, whatever issue is in front of you, no matter your anxiety or fear, it's still going to happen. And it really probably doesn't matter in the end. Um, and it's nice to take that time to realize that with the pandemic and everybody's wearing a mask, I've learned a couple of things. One is people smile with their eyes. Yep. You know, you, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, people smile with their eyes. And so I've learned that. I've also learned that uh, my hearing's going, and when people, if I can't look at someone's lips while they talk, that it's, I 
can't hear them as well. Sure. Uh, so that's just my uh, aging deficit there. But but definitely people smile with their eyes, and it, it just it, it it is it's just a natural response that smile makes you smile to, to, rubs off on people. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to say it. But now, can from your professional point or perspective, can mm -hmm. can individuals use laughter uh, to um, maybe disguise a deeper issue? And that, and how would you sort through that to say, okay, this this laughter is not sincere or a marker of something else? Sure. I think it definitely does happen. I mean, people use humor for lots of things. Um, I don't know if I would say laughter specifically, like the act of laughing, but definitely humor can serve as a distraction. Um, it certainly is more inviting and acceptable to laugh instead of, you know, breaking down into tears, um, like in the community. But it's kind of a difficult balance in a therapeutic setting. Um, we found, and I kind of talked to some colleagues about this too, because laughter really can be a survival skill for some right. people. Like that's yeah. the way we get through it. Like all we can do is laugh, right? Especially 2020 pandemic, you know, any other traumas from the past. Um, so we want to really validate that, but also offer them a safe place to sit with their emotions and their feelings. Um, and certainly a lot of people with traumatic backgrounds or um, more severe symptomology might not have ever really had that. So I don't know that I can tell like that's a laugh that's not helpful as much sure. as just like if there's some pretty distinct like dancing around um, the, the topic at hand or what we're kind of trying to get to. That That makes sense. So, you know, I guess I'm kind of coming to the conclusion or working towards that it's not necessarily laughter is the best medicine, but having humor, yeah. uh, appropriate humor is probably the best medicine. Yeah, and just being open. Like, I tell my clients all the time, like, when existing is hard, when your mental health makes just kind of life difficult, it's really pretty priceless to seek out something that offers you that release. And, and we all have those friends. Yeah. I, my, I have a daughter that's just really good at laughing at herself, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think what that does is it conveys a sense of humility mm -hmm. that, you know, I can't take things too serious. I do take things serious, but I'm able to say, uh, laugh at myself and, and think about that. You know, that's a compliment. You know, they say, oh, so-and-so, they, they just have the ability to laugh at themselves. And I think that's, that's something that uh, is overlooked as just a good character trait to have. For sure. Yeah. Just being able to own that and yeah, just being able to own it and find that release and be able to be comfortable with, you know, this happened and, you know, what else can you do? So. Now, people that know me are going to know that I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite here uh, because I take, like, I don't like the movie Patch Adams. I, I like, <laughs> you know, I think being a physician is a very serious uh, yeah, sure. I, I mean, it, it's good to have humor. It's good to have a personality. It's good to have humility, uh, yeah. and, and, and be there for your patients. But I also, um, uh, you have to know when to turn it off too. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. 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 I refuse to watch the movie Patch Adams. I think what, I, I don't think I've ever watched the whole thing. So Robin I'm Williams sure. is a hero. Now, you know, I, I, I love Robin Williams, like when he plays serious roles, I think he's sure. great. At him. You know, yeah. unfortunately he's passed away and had mental health, you know, yeah. depression. Uh, but it, yeah, I just, I, I don't want to say that I take it too serious, but I just have sure. a serious side. Yeah. I think people that know me both personally and professionally would say that that's probably why they picked me for this. I'm pretty like, I take my job seriously, but I also kind of allow for that distraction a little bit. And um, I think it helps me in my practice because it makes people more comfortable and increases rapport and are able to, you know, connect with me on that level before we dig into the, the trauma and yeah. the serious things. Um, I know obviously you see clients for a less amount of time at once, you know, 
and just when things are kind of acutely going on. Yeah, I, you know, I think laughter might be the best medicine, but caring about the patient is the best treatment plan. Right. Uh, Agreed. So, uh, it, this is really great information. Thank you so much for taking the time again. I know you guys are busy over at Abby. Uh, this is Laughter and Mental Health, Liz Breen, a licensed social worker, outpatient therapist for Unipoint Health, Abby Health. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Live Well Talk On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.